All right. This is the year 2023. November, I believe it's the uh, 9th. Something like that. 8th. I don't know, maybe the 10th. But anyways, this is the weekend to uh, honor our veterans. And I just wanted to uh, let my viewers know that uh, sometimes, sometimes the, uh, the force of the furious has to do what they need to do to be able to maintain their freedom love of God, country, and family. I want to take you over here real quick. The wind has been so ferocious for the past week. I've been having trouble in maintaining my bigger flag. I'm putting it and keeping it where it should be. But anyways, I'm going to walk around here. And then I have a story to tell pertaining to James Robert Jackson. I knew all along that my son Nicholas, he, he thought that I was degrading his grandfather. And it wasn't that I was trying to degrade his grandfather. I was just looking at both sides of the perspective of what makes a good father versus a good soldier. Now, I've been accused of being a deadbeat dad. And maybe in lots of ways I can see where he's seen that in my recuperating from my injuries. But at the same token, I don't feel like that he's ever had the heart in understanding having multiple injuries sometimes can have a harsh effect upon to one's recovery. Now James Robert Jackson, okay, he was as good and as well-mannered of a person that you would ever want to be around in certain atmospheres and doing certain things. My son was honored enough to be at his death site whenever he died that I told him just the other day that he may have been the very only reason why that I truly believe that James Robert Jackson, that everybody called Bob, is in heaven today beside God Almighty and all the other veterans who have sacrificed their lives the same way. I told a story about my dad whenever basically the war had ended, how that his best friend that got blowed up right in front of him, that he was in close contact with the fiance of his best buddy that was supposed to have married after he hopefully returned back. Well, he never got to make it back. All the POWs and EMIAs, a great deal of them, never come back during World War II, never come back during World War I, and never come back in all the other wars that we have endlessly had to fight. Not because we wanted to fight, but because it was forced upon to us to fight. When my dad 
passed away at the time I was in Kansas City, Missouri, keeping up per minute, per detail, everything that was going on, including my ex-wife and my stepdaughter and uh, the priest being there with my son Nicholas that he called in. But a few weeks after he had passed, I let Nancy, mother, I think her name was Patsy, which I believe was uh, my grandmother's sister's daughter up in Chicago about my dad's passing. And she first started out, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm truly so sorry about your father's death. And she remembered Bob from way, way back. And about halfway into her condolences, she stopped. And she asked me, she said, how did he die? And I told her about the priest him taking the Bible and laying on his body and the priest going laying over my dad's body and then the priest standing back up and the priest taking the Bible and putting it to his chest and all of a sudden my dad that was basically incoherent the whole time according to my brother David that was there too at his bedside he turned his head never opened his eyes but he turned his head as if he was going to open his eyes. And David was astonished because he thought, well, maybe he's going to come too. Maybe, uh, maybe this was just an episode and he's going to break away. But that time, according to my brother and my son, dad raised his arm up towards his hand going up towards the priest and there was no way that he could see the priest because his eyes were still shut. He was still basically incoherent. And about the time that his hand fell, his arm fell and hit the bed, all of a sudden his vital signs started going haywire and within just a matter of minutes, life had left him. Life had left James Robert Jackson. My dad did everybody know around here in being Bob. Well, you know, life didn't just leave one veteran, but it left all the veterans in response towards what they believed in and what they was fighting for and who they believed in. Anyways, after I told my story to my grandmother's sister's daughter, the one that used to work for Jerry Springer up in Chicago, she said, wow, that was a good, clean death, wasn't it? And my response was, yes, it was. He lived out his life accordingly. Now, it took me a while to understand my dad, to understand what was really grieving him inside that he never, never uttered not one word about. And a lot of them old vets, they didn't come back whining and crying. They didn't come back wanting everybody to feel sorry for them. They come back, they done their duties, and they done their job, and they come back home to start their families all over again. Now, in the process of my dad's friend getting blowed up right in front of him, and he basically was wearing his, his uh, bodily parts on his body, his girlfriend called him and said, Bob, if you don't mind, I would appreciate if you was to kill one of them damn Germans for me that killed him because I really, really cared a lot about him. I loved him. And Dad said that after basically the war had ended, that he almost got his whole battalion in trouble 
but that he went outside and took a long arm rifle and made a shot and killed one of them, which was about a mile away. He said it was a lucky shot, but it was over a uh, body of water into a valley, and he said the whole platoon got locked down, and everybody wanted to know who done that, who done that, who done that. And Dad never uttered a word to nobody about how and why he done what he done. Dad also told me another story in regards towards after you come back home and you get decommissioned, they brief you and you get you basically ready to go back out into the civilian life. They have, I don't forgot the name of it now, a um, some sort of a celebration in, in, in honor of their return. And he said that he never f forgotten the night that he was there. Uh, whenever you got your award, everybody had to make a little speech in telling a little bit about their testimony, about their story, and what that they had done and and their achieving moments. And Dad said that whenever he got up to speak, even though he was an excellent, excellent performer, whenever he come to playing a guitar and having an opportunity to go into the Grand Ole Opry with Hank Williams Sr., he said just about every time he opened up his mouth, it was a F-bomb or some other bad brinking sound that come from his mouth. And he said the first time he'd done it, he immediately shut up and he tried to overlook it. And then he got to talking again. And then he dropped the F-bomb again. And it kind of embarrassed him a little bit, but he, he kind of sh shunned it off. But then whenever he got back up there to talk again, he said it again. He could not stop himself from talking like a sailor. You are what you are during the time that you are. And that's what made not only James Robert Jackson, but all the other veterans who have fought even to the ultimate sacrifice some of the greatest warriors in the world. Some of the greatest. Anyways, my dad said after it happened a third time, he just basically picked up his brochures and everything that he was uh, doing, and he said he basically turned red in the face and turned around and walked off the stage. I just imagine that was not just his endearing moment, but also others too as well. Because once you're in the field and you become that in which what you are fighting against, you basically have to become a monster to defeat a monster. You have to become aggressive in every approach that you make if you are going to defeat your opponent, your enemy. And I thank God to this day pertaining to our veterans, all of them who have fought, who have lived, who have died, especially those who have died the ultimate sacrifice in battle and those pertaining to the MIA missing in action that we still have high hopes one day of returning. The United States military, unlike any other that has ever come forth and that ever will come forth, pertaining to their training exercises of what they are and who they are. And like I said, it took me a while to finally figure out my dad, but while he was in Germany fixing to go to the Battle of the Bulge, all of a sudden he had an emergency medical problem. And because of it, it took him off of duty for a while. And whenever he got back on duty, 
he found out that his whole platoon, the second infantry, every one of them been killed. It's called guilt remorse of so many veterans that seen their buddies get blown to smithereens and knowing that they themselves should have been in their shoes and had to come back and live with themselves out of guilt of wondering why was I spared? Why was I spared and everybody else had to sacrifice during the time that they sacrificed? Well, you know, the Bible says that we're not to question the Lord and that the ways of the Lord sometimes are mysterious. But I know this, that if my dad did go to the Battle of Bulge and he was with his second infantry, Odds are, I wouldn't be making this video right now, looking at the tin soldier, overlooking the Purple Heart Memorial. The Purple Heart Dragon Memorial, that's not only representing the grief, despairs, and our veterans, but also in memory of all the gun violence, and some of the other heinous acts that has been committed here in the United States towards others that had to basically walk down that same path of the ultimate sacrifice that I truly believe will be rewarded for their courageousness, that they will be rewarded for their commitment and they will be rewarded for their achievements. I just wanted to finish this all up here in response towards honoring our other branches of military, especially those pertaining to our Coast Guard in honor of basically those that are always ready on site at any given moment and that the Red Cross and that our hospital that helped in so many other different scenarios, especially during 9-11, that those men and women deserve our hats being taken off to them pertaining to what they do and how they do it. I know that my dad was aggressive. He was as aggressive in combat as he was a gentleman in civilian life to a certain degree. He did have a temper that I think most around here will acknowledge, but he never did kill none of us, though he threatened to, just like he told his mother that if she, that if she even so much has cut down that tree that she felt like because of the superstitiousness around here that once your son our daughter had cut down a tree and the tree become big enough to shade a grave that that was a omen they thought during that time that your son or your daughter was fixing to die and possibly come back home in a pine box. That tree right there in the center of that heart was not planted by me. That was planted by God. 
that tree, which was the original elm tree that my grandmother had that I thought was completely, totally dead, come back alive out of nowhere and started growing. That tree I planted. Dad also planted some walnut trees or some uh, pecan trees back in the back. And one of them has done extremely, extremely well this year towards producing all kinds of nuts. I told, uh, I told Ricky Staggs' his dad, Clyde Staggs, that he can come over here and get as many of them that he wanted, that I wasn't going to be able to get, get them because I was, had plans of an operation this year. Well, I was told, regrettably, that I didn't meet the criteria. I didn't cut the grade this time in being able to have an operation. I hadn't lost enough weight pertaining to me being poisoned by the federal government up in Kentucky in Trigg County by the name of Judge Woodall. But I did want to say thank you to all the veterans out there that we know when you come back you're going to be banged up. You're going to be hurt. But this is where it's our responsibility to sustain, take care, and hopefully comfort the rest of your life. Because, in essence, how can you thank somebody who has given their life for a good cause, he or she, how can you ever repay them back for that in which what they done for the freedoms and the benefit of freedom and liberty for all? Looks like somebody out deer hunting, doing their thing. That's one thing that I do love about this area down here close to Obion River and Beach Ridge that uh, that it's so peaceful and tranquil down here in comparison to the uproar of the city life and the uproar on TV pertaining to all the battles and all the wars and all the skirmishes all over the world. One thing about it, anybody that comes out here in memory of their veteran or past veterans that are always welcome, I just pray that you will find serenity, peace, and a feeling of of love and contentment on this property that has been dedicated to not just one veteran, but to all. That has been dedicated to all the senseless gun violence that has went on here in our country. And all the other heinous, horrendous acts of the civil rights movement on over to the Waco Mount Karma incident that led into those who perished in the Oklahoma bombing that may from this day on be a special, special place in Northwest Tennessee in Weekly County at 291 Thompson Road, Sharon, Tennessee, zip code 3255, in honor of all our veterans that most went with the shield of David in response towards their true protection. I thank God every day that I live in America because without her, where would we be? Where would we be 
as a free, fair nation for the world. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your considerations towards helping a veteran this weekend. All week has been in celebration of them. Of just thanking them for every ounce of courage and energy that they used to make sure we had a place called home to make sure that we had a place that we could protect and be proud of and raise our children up in towards them being proud called America God bless and Shalom